Moving on up to bum, bum, the bum, bum. east side. To the east side. Okay. Why is it? Why is it that in most cities they expand west? At least all the cities I know of, like people go in the east and they move west. That's how Salt Lake was. I know that's how lots of cities are. I don't know. I don't know either. It's the east side's better. Is your mic working? You're very quiet. Hello. No. Oh. I don't know. Is it? I yeah. can hear myself. I hear you. No, I must be using the other headphones. I am. No, you're using the right headphones. Oh, I don't know then. Anywho. Yeah. Yeah. What do we what what events do we got going on this week? I don't know. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we actually looked them up this I week. don't know. Uh, we got uh this week we have an anarchist study group in Tam or in uh, Austin. Austin, that's right. Uh, Treasure City Thrift. It's every Sunday at seven PM. And they have a study group website. It's a studygroup.wordpress.com. God, I wish we did that. Like somebody we could do that here with. Yeah, Treasure City Thrift is pretty cool because they they sent me a lot of books when I was in the P. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so check that out. We also have it's coming up. It's about time to plan it though. Um, the in October, October nineteenth, yep. we have Tampa Bay Veg Fest. You can find out more details at that, tampabayvegfest.org. It's, it's free. free. And if you have anything in your own community, if you want to find more events, you can always go to witchsidepodcast.com. These, all these events are listed at witchsidepodcast.com yeah, so also. So let us know. And and we're going to be working on throwing up a calendar for Tampa now also. Yeah. So because if, someone let us know. If someone let us know. So thank you, Cody Allen, for letting us know. Yeah. yeah that's sweet. So um, this week we have a new segment that we want to spin off into another new uh, podcast. We're trying to give, put out things that you can see the, the direction we're trying to hopefully go with future content. And uh, we sit down and talk to Vigo Levin Vegan for a very, very short time. All new vegans. But they will be vegan for life. For life. We're calling this segment Vegan for Life. <laughs> because now that they stated they're vegan on and you record it and it'll go in in their history podcast that will never be deleted off the internet it's there forever they're kind of stuck to their word it's true yeah no but it's, it's a really good it's a really good chance to get to talk to new people um get their perspective on it you know one of the shocking things uh, about talking to these people was that every one of them was uh, amazed how easy it was yeah every one of them very very people very few people had actual questions there was a really great question that we addressed though yeah, there's some really good questions that we, uh-huh. we help address. Um, if you guys have any questions you want us to address, let us know. Drop us a line. But um, not like I'm fantastic or anything. No, but, but I just been doing it for a while. It, yeah, you know, a little bit of experience, and we still have learning to do. So you totally, know, totally. If you have any suggestions for us? If you think that eating products that may contain is wrong, let us know. Let me know why. But um, I forgot my train of thought right there. Oh, my train of thought was, if you are one of these new vegans, drop us a line. We'd love to do a little quick little interview with you yeah. and throw you up on one of these segments. And if you're not and you're interesting, drop us a line. Man, maybe we'll do a 20 plus year vegan show too. <laughs> I've been vegan a long time and I'm jaded. And I'm jaded. <laughs> and bitter. <laughs> Let's talk about this jadedness. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. What happened? What I happened to your knee? Ow! Did it really just hurt? Every time I sit down and bend it, it hurts. <laughs> what the fuck did I you? I don't do? know. <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> Yellow. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck did you do to your knee? I don't know. It's <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so you guys need to plan your honeymoon. Yeah. What the fuck are you guys doing for your honeymoon? Uh, hitting up the GC, <laughs> the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone who didn't know, it just happened. Mari came in and flipped me off. <laughs> and 
and uh, we're going to go to Vegas. <laughs> Hold on. What? <laughs> okay, so you going to go visit visit the GC. The GC, the LV. The LV. The LA. The LA. Uh, SF? Possibly SF. SF? Possibly. Okay. Um, LT? Yo, the YS, maybe. Yosemite. Oh, Yosemite. Okay. Y-S. YM. Y- uh, yeah, I don't know what you'd call that one. <laughs> yeah. I you don't need know. to go through heard... Tahoe or Yosemite? We're probably gonna we're probably gonna go through the side. We're gonna go through like Reno, and then. Are you heading down south first, or heading we're gonna across head, first? We're gonna head across first because we're trying to avoid. So you just said it backwards the entire way. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just making sure I understood this right. <sighs> what else? Because I don't you... want people following me. <laughs> what else? <laughs> well, we just told them what you're doing. Yeah. So. <laughs> what else, you guys? Uh, how... What else do you need to do for your wedding? Um, Besides actually get married. I have to get a wedding ceremony. I have to get the little paper thing. Oh, you haven't, you haven't got the certificate yet? <laughs> yeah, the most important thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty important. Uh, so, gonna... are you really going to say your vow, vow? Fuck. I can't talk. Vow fuck? The, um, what Chuck is doing. <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck is that called? He's an efficient. Efficient, thank you. Yeah. He's, you already you really need to use that speech? Yeah. Sweet. Totally. You wanna wanna share an example of what that speech is? No. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I say it on the last episode? I have no idea. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I might have. Maybe not fully. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's very, I think I'm going to try to make it as subtle, but not subtle as well. So, um, I'm not going to be fully flagrant about my thoughts on marriage, but I'm going to. About how that. you love the ownership aspect of it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So since we, we talked to Donna, and it made me think about health. I'm not, um, I don't want to say crazy like her. I don't want to say she's crazy, but um, I'm not as gung-ho about it as she is. About health, yeah, yeah, and um, but yeah, when it starts, when it starts getting into eating fucking bread, I mean, come on, yeah, shit, I'm not giving up my bread, but I've I've bought more vegetables. I started doing smoothies again, green green juicing again. I should say I don't do smoothies. Yeah, um, I fucking bought bananas today. Good for you to eat in the morning. How do you feel about the fact that they have to be shipped? Do you know? Do you know what Callie said about the bananas? What she goes? What the fuck? You're not a child. I know. I thought it was funny. <laughs> you are kind of a child. I am kind of a child. But I, I really need to be a little bit, a little bit healthier. I really should cut out the bread. You know, mainly Just limit for the teeth. Teeth. What about teeth? So, um, the more carbohydrates you consume. That uh, sit in your mouth. The bacteria in your mouth eats it, and they shit it out as acid. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Fair enough. Yeah. But bread is damn good, and so is pasta. Yeah, no, I'm not going to cut it out. I just, for a while, I used to sit down and eat a fucking loaf of bread at a time. That's crazy. God, I, I fucking that. love bread. Yeah. What do you got? Is that sourdough starter I see over there? Yeah, I just fed it today. I didn't make any this week, but um, I had to feed it today so it doesn't die. Um, so yes. I, I, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I want bagels still. I, I should make some. I didn't have time to make them. We've been helping you guys so much. I haven't had time to, yeah. to bake as much as I normally do. But, I, um, I saw a donut pan the other day at the store. For cake donuts? Yeah. I yeah. want that. Was that when we were at Gigi? Um, I'm sure they had it there too. I okay. actually saw it somewhere else though. Sweet. That shit's so expensive though. I was looking at trying to find a pan to make my own buns for hot dog and hamburger buns. Yeah. They're like 40 fucking dollars. Yeah, they're expensive, but once you have it, it's pretty sweet. I don't think I'm going to make hot dog buns 60 fucking times to make it worth the money. You would. Nope. Because when I want a hot dog, 
I want a hot dog now. I don't want to have to make I, fucking buns for I it. I would always, I would always eat a hot dog every single day if I could. Every day? Every day. You know, I multiple don't. Multiple times a day, multiple hot dogs. I don't hate vegan hot dogs, but I only really eat them camping and or like um, a function where you're trying to blend in and it's not all vegan. You know, where they're like they're having hamburgers and hot dogs. And it's more so that other people feel better about the whole situation. I, that makes sense. I, I started a new job and um, I brought my own sandwich. Mm -hmm. And they don't, I don't know, not all of them know that I'm vegan yet. I think they found my Wikipedia page and so they know <laughs> a little bit about me. But <laughs> um, I, I felt really awkward bringing a sandwich like with tofurkey and stuff on it because I didn't want people to think to that, think that you're eating, that I yeah. was and I had like yeah. a cheesecake the other day that Mari brought me and I'm just like oh, people don't know about me yet yeah and as soon as they find out they're gonna be like didn't you eat a cheesecake and didn't you have a sandwich that had meat in it and cheese in it I was like, quit looking at me <laughs> <laughs> quit looking at me well I'm the new guy so uh but yeah awkward silence it's a great it's a great job i like that job a lot it is it's a really good job uh um congratulations on that job thank you but do it be the most ideal thing in the world what's that we got more members and we could quit our jobs and just do more content stuff or at least cover the cost of the <laughs> or at least show. actually make it so we're not paying for it out of our own pockets because i like my job <laughs> it's weird <laughs> <laughs> it's true you actually it's a pretty sweet gig so that's awesome congratulations on that thank you. um when does the new liberator come out um i'm not sure i have to talk to matt yeah they usually come out around like the 13th i sent out a picture of a penis yesterday yeah you did was that yesterday or today that was yesterday that was yesterday mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed that matt <laughs> what this is a classic content i know jesus what just I... happened we just went into a lull Fucking hate this content. Woo. Anywho, we're uh, interviewing new vegans. Yeah, it's for a new segment, but we kind of want to turn it into an a actual podcast. Podcast, like a, a half hour long podcast, bi monthly. Yeah, so we'd uh, would like some feedback on that if we could. Yeah, so we'll we'll throw that at the end. We got a couple new vegans we interviewed, um, and hopefully we can make it a, a consistent thing. What I really want to do is follow up with them in like a year and see where a lot of them are at. Yeah. You know? That'd be great. Um, how they're doing, how they're going. Um, I think it it it, it would help would have helped me, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it would have helped a lot of other people. You know, it it gives you that check in where you're like, you know, I confirm that I've made this choice a couple weeks ago on you know an internationally listened to show. Speaking yeah. of internationally, we got a whole bunch of listeners in Kazakhstan. Listeners in Kazakhstan really? now. <laughs> yeah, is that where? Isn't that where, uh, not Bruno, what's the other one? Borat's from? No, he was from like a made up country. Wasn't he? No, I think he just, I think he said like Kazakhstan, but yeah, no one knows what Kazakhstan is. So they're just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was looking at the map yesterday and I'm like, what is this one next to China over here that all suddenly popped up? I really think that he's from Kazakhstan. He, I might he be might wrong. Have, he might have been be funny from Kazakhstan. Well, welcome Kazakhstan yeah, listeners. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry about Borat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. It was funny. I really like Bruno, though. I like the, the take that he has on confronting the the homophobia in culture. Oh, and, yeah. And hit, taking it, you know, head on. Well, even, even with Borat, it was confronting race and racism yeah. and everything mm -hmm. else, so. And same with Dictator, too. Dictator, but it was a movie. So Yeah, it was a little different, but he still yeah. confronted all that stuff. Yeah. I've always been a pretty big fan of his stuff, his work. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I like it. His wife's really cute, too. I don't know. Yeah. Lol. She's the, um, the redhead in Wedding Crashers. Okay, I think I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Wanna, wanna do anarchy answers? Sure. <laughs>
We're going to do Reddit on Reddit. How about Reddit? Yeah, let's do Reddit on Reddit instead. Let's open up Reddit real quick. Reddit on... What was our uh, intro we were going to do for that? Reddit on Reddit. Reddit. I don't know. I'm just making shit up right now. You should do like... uh, Make it go like, Reddit on Reddit. Thumbs down. They don't do thumbs though. I don't know. Sometimes they do. It depends on the site. Or it depends on the subreddit. On the subreddit, yeah. Sometimes it might be a Photoshop, or sometimes it might be a paintbrush. What is, uh, do you have any new subreddits out there that that you've been been into? Uh, uh, not really. I've been, I haven't really been on Reddit, uh, last week. I've only been, I've been on the DIY a lot this week, but I've already talked about that one. It's a, that's one I thoroughly enjoy. I, I still like Today I Learn. What do we got on Today I Learn? Oh, wait. What's this? I'm on anarchism right now. Uh-huh. Um, here's one I, I threw up. I threw this one up on my, my reading list. Um, I've only read a couple of things about it. I haven't read too much into it. The couple NSA employees have been found that they have been spying on... Social networks? S- no. Like, girlfriends and, like, people that they, they like. There was one NSA employee that was spying on six girls that he had crushes on for six years. <laughs> Using all the NSA, you know, um, stuff that had come out. Well, yeah, all the wiretaps and everything. And so, the the idea that you know this is only being used, like people fucking wake up, is ridiculous. Yeah. Plus, the uh, the the head of the NSA was asked if he plans on uh, getting a profile on every U.S. citizen. He plainly stated yes. Wow. Yeah, just fucking flat out. It's it's pretty fucked up. So, which one did you want to go to? Today I learn. How about? Do they do T I L or is it Today I Learn? You can do either. It'll forward it. Today I learned has moved to Today I Learned. <laughs> I usually just type T I L so that I don't have to type in Today I Learned because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today I learned there are pictures of knights fighting snells in medieval manuscripts and nobody knows why. Huh. Because there's <laughs> giant snells? That is a really interesting one. Today I learned that a Kenyan lawyer is trying to get International Court of Justice to overturn the conviction and execution of Jesus Christ and to have Italy and Israel held responsible for it on the grounds that they both incorporate Roman law in their legal systems. What? (laughs) What proof is there that he existed? (laughs) Jesus Christ. I just... (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) You didn't even realize you said that. <laughs> Today I learned that it is generally a violation of National Labor Relations Act for a U.S. company to tell its employees that they are not allowed to share their salaries with their peers. Wait, I don't see that one. Okay, that it is generally. Okay, hold on. I learned that it's generally. When is yeah. it not a violation? <clears throat> Try another, because I'll just keep reading them if you don't. Today I learned that the prescription bottles are orange because it restricts the amount of light entering the bottle, and it's not green or brown because that ruins visibility of the pills. I already knew that. Good for you, fucking idiot. Today I learned Russia has hundreds of nuclear-powered lighthouses and beacons along the northern shipping route. That's kind of scary. (laughs) What I was going to say, though, (laughs) I've thumbed down things before that I've known. Like, I didn't learn that today. You know, <laughs> I'm not learning shit. Uh, speaking of Russia, though, the shit that they're doing with um, homosexuality in Russia is fucking mind-boggling. What are they doing right now? They're completely making it illegal, like, uh, just to... like Even they, claim to be? Well, they've made it illegal to promote homosexuality in any way, shape, or form, mm-hmm. which means that saying you're homosexual is promotion of being homosexual, which okay. that's illegal. Um, they're encouraging uh, beatings, they're, and they're also trying to make it that um, if you are homosexual and have children, that they will take the children away from you and put them in a Russian adoption home. Um, Canada just listed Russia as a place for asylum. So if you're homosexual, you can go to Canada and claim asylum immediately. The United States should be fucking following suit on this. It's ridiculous that we haven't. Yeah. Um, what, one of the awesome things that they're doing is uh, it's called Drop the Russian Vodka campaign. Yeah. And uh, where it's basically, you know, don't purchase Russian vodka on purpose. It's having huge major impacts in Russia. It's actually like sending waves. So like, 
a good idea. If you fucking drink vodka, you know, purposely go to your liquor store and tell them not to sell Russian vodka for that exact same reason. Buy five wives. Yeah, five wives if you're in the Western States. A local Idaho brewery makes a five wives of vodka. It's against, it's, they banned it in Idaho, which is funny because that's where they make it. Yeah, it's the picture. It's the, yeah, it's an old it, picture of a polygamous family holding they, cats. Yeah, they right? have cats. Yeah. In their crotch region, I think, is yeah. why yeah. it's banned. And it's an actual photo. This isn't like doctored not, in yeah. any way. Yeah, they're just holding cats. And we found that out <laughs> the weirdest way. How, how did you find that out? Uh, I don't know. The, the liquor lady told me. The liquor lady. She was just talking about it. Some lady walking down the store. Hey, liquor lady. <laughs> she was all like, because we were laughing at it, I think. Yeah. And she's like, oh, let me tell you about that. It's actually banned. Blah, blah, blah. I'm actually buying it for Mari's parents when they come in as a, as a welcome gift. Welcome. Here's polygamous vodka. You've got mail. <laughs> You've got mail? I don't know. Whenever I hear You've welcome. Got, who the fuck even knows what that is anymore? I don't know. I'm throwing it back to the 90s. <laughs> Welcome. You've got mail. You've got Remember the mail. show called You Got Mail? Did you know that there's still a ton of AOL subscribers that Gaze. pay for internet service? Really? Yeah. They don't even pay for internet service. They're paying for AOL and they just never canceled the AOL service and they still have secondary internet. <laughs> it's insane. Makes sense. Uh, it's like, like Gold's people, Gym. It's freaking ridiculous. Freaking, yeah, it is like gym membership. Gym memberships are fucking... Like extortion, brutal. You, know, if if every member in a gym went at the same time, you would not even at the same time. Even just if they, in general, in general, if every member actually visited the gym, you would never be able to use it. No, they oversell that shit so much, knowing that you're a bunch of fucking fat asses that won't actually go to the gym. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I include myself in that. I don't. Yeah, care. I have. Uh... A gym membership and I never go. Exactly. Like, exactly. I actually have two free gym memberships. I have one at work and one in my local community, and I don't go to either one of those. And they're fucking free. Like, there's no excuse. Like, get off my fucking lazy ass, right? Seriously. Anyways, let's get back to Reddit. Let's see what else we got here. I, you really need to get the Reddit enhancement suite. It's, <laughs> it's a life changer. It's a life changer? Yeah, it'll change your life. Taylor and Jack Nicholson worked for Animation Legends. Williams, Hanna, and Joseph Barbara. He was talented enough to be offered a spot as a staff animator, but declined in favor of acting. Way to go, Jack. Did I learn that Comic Book Guy's worst episode ever originated from a news group poster? He used it to describe his displeasure with the episode Itchy and Scratchy, the movie. Yeah, here's one that I would thumbs down because I already knew. Did I learn there's a gospel according to Mary Magdalene that is not included in the Bible? Yeah, so like, th- seriously, thumbs down. Like, thumbs like down. If, if you have studied religion at all and didn't know that, like, there's something wrong the with apocrypha. you. Apocrypha. Like, if you if you haven't studied religion, I understand you not knowing that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, let's refresh it one more time. Let's Let, go to the next page. Let's go to the next. Why are we doing this one? Let's do this. Let's, today um, I learned is awesome. The fuck today I learned right now. Let's go to bitch. I'm a bus. Well, that's not really one that you can... I'm just kidding. I'm not going to that one. <laughs> I was like, why? That's just videos of people in buses. Buses, like, ramming cars and, like... Yeah. It's it's good for a laugh. Check that shit out. People, people who aren't familiar with Reddit are like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bitch, I'm a bus. They're like... Which, I hate that term, but whatever. It's a good subreddit. It's like, there's a, there's a subreddit about buses? Yes. Yes. Yes, there is. Yes. Yes, there is. You know nothing of Reddit. Oh my God! Chiropractor breaks baby's neck in New, is that New oh Zealand. Oh God, that's so Terrible. sad. Why is it somebody taking a baby to a chiropractor in Australia? Why? Why is a chiropractor cheating a fucking infant child? Seriously, that is so fucked up. Man and horse die in Amish buggy collision. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> NSA Internet It's not laughing at that. I'm sorry. It was... <laughs> you read it as I was reading something else. Okay. <laughs> and, that, and the juxtaposition of it just made it like, oh, fuck. <laughs> NSA Internet spying sparks race to create offshore havens for data privacy. That'll you be know, good. Here's this one. U.S. troops won't get paid during shutdown. You know, uh, I hate getting into, like, modern politics because I hate the whole fucking system. But 
you know, I hate the system. I don't even want to get into like the whole government shutdown and all that other fucking horse shit, like m- little pony show thing they do. Yeah. You know? And it's what's worse for me is that like authority is, uh, you know, something that obviously I have issue with our current society. So, yeah. Um, I'd include, you know, military in that, but they're, they're paid people and they should be paid. They will. They get furloughed. Yeah. Yeah. I, from a worker's, from a worker's perspective, I'm just like, that still comes out of me. I'm just like, yeah, fuck the police, but they should be paid if there's something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it sucks. You no, know, it's true. It, it's, you know, but, um, it was funny. The other day, Mari was talking to me. She's asking me like why I vote. And I was trying to explain to her how we vote for judges and we can put them in and out Mm -hmm. and i only vote to vote every judge out yeah (laughs) i do that too yeah yeah she's kind of like you do that (laughs) yeah my dad does too yeah i know a lot of people that do that i think it's a good practice if you live in an area where you can actually vote for your judges i know not everywhere you can um i I definitely suggest that vote every fucking judge out every fucking time you go in it's great yeah it's awesome they have to be replaced yeah i wanted to start the the uh none of the above campaign I don't know if anyone else would would help with that. I'm sure people would help with that. I really want, I seriously, an organized campaign across the country. I was thinking it would be funny to start an anarchist party as well. I think so too. And having running candidates. Oh, I'd love that. I would vote for it every fucking time. Not that it would get anywhere. Even it, even like if you look at presidential elections where like you look at the socialist party and it's just like not an eligible candidate. Yeah. (laughs) Smiley face. (laughs) Smiley face. It's like, uh... um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder how hard it would be to get the anarchist party on the local ballot here. We could start that way. I bet we could. Let's look. I'll, I'm going to look into that. Yeah. But the none of the above campaign is basically stating that um, I think I don't remember who had the original idea for it. It's been going around, kicking around for a long time, where you should have an option to vote for no one, and if the majority of the people vote for no one or no one gets a majority vote, mm-hmm. they have to do another election. Right. Yeah. Either with new people or whatever. Like you're basically saying, we don't fucking like any of you. Get the fuck out of our elections. And how how would we be able to get that on ballot? I have no idea. I don't think it would be. I I don't know the logistics of it. You can you can have write-ins with a lot of people. Yeah, but it, could you imagine if you actually had a none of the above option? That way, you didn't have to vote for a lesser of two evils. You could yeah. honestly go in there and truly vote your conscience and be like, "Fuck you." What would they do if they got a high percent? That would I don't think they, they would, would have to rehold the election. Yeah, I don't think they would with do new it. people. I don't think they. No, do. neither party would fucking allow that to happen. No, but I think it would be the the next best thing in our our system, like. I know it's working within the system. I'm like, oh, don't give me that shit. I understand that, but I think it's better than what it is now. Yeah, you know, and it's actually giving a, a true voice to to people because you know, how many people disagree with each other, but disagree with the people running even more. You know, get people that are actually going to rep- be representative if we're going to be in a representative democracy. Yeah, and that option allows that. I guess you could. We could start it at a level of you start at a grassroots level of writing in none of the above writing in none of the above and then making uh none of the above like stickers uh-huh. and posting them so on like write political in, signs right put them right next to political signs yeah, write yeah. in none of the above none of the above you can do it right now do that i'm gonna start to yeah uh, i want to get organized i want somebody who wants to take this on full time be sweet yeah i mean i don't want to take it on full time yeah i can't but I wish somebody would. I bet. I bet. I bet we could rally up people to do it. You know, I'm so ignorant on this issue. I bet you there's somebody actually trying right now. I bet <laughs> there's something similar going on. Probably. It probably is. We should. We should find out and contact them. We could get it. We go through any of the anons that are listening. Um, they're totally got their connections. So they yeah. could start spreading this like wildfire. I right, I love the idea. Right now, there's a million man march on November 5th that's going to be happening. That seems like it's going to be pretty big. Um, I'm not. What's what's going on with this? Um, you know, like V for Vendetta, um, the comic and the movie, the significance behind November fifth. Uh, remember, remember the fifth of November. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and then anonymous, obviously using uh, Guy Fox masks as um, a way of concealing their. Sorry, I know. Remaining anonymous, I should say. <laughs> Remaining anonymous. <laughs> I wouldn't say concealing your identity because it's yeah. ne- not necessarily doing that. It's just a, a symbol of solidarity. I, yeah, I see in like a lot of we're ways. all together. Yeah. Um, we're, we're nameless faces. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, you know, Guy Fox 
it's always had the ties to that. And so the 5th of November, they're going to be doing a march to D.C. From where? Uh, I'm not sure. I think all over. Right now, looking at the the one of the Facebook event pages that I got invited to, at least um, 12,000 people are going. We should um, get somebody on. Have them talk about it. Yeah, totally. Hey, if you're if you know anything about this, help and organize it. Drop us a line. And I think I think it's becoming one of those like Occupy things where it's splitting. Yeah, and so you have you know millionmanmarch.org, dot org, which is different than the people who are calling themselves Million Man March. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean it, that's good in, in, in a lot of yeah, ways too. I mean that's how you centralizes get, everything. That's how you get massive movements actually moving. That's how <laughs> uh, quote unquote the Battle of Seattle was. It was you know a yeah. whole bunch of people. From different backgrounds fighting for you know, the same cause. Yeah. But so. uh, do you remember the end of that movie or book? I never watched or read it. Basically, everyone comes out on the 5th of November and stops par- Parliament. They go to Parliament with their... The Guy Fox mask. With the Guy Fox mask. So it's that yeah. same idea. You know, I... I It'd be a, interesting. I've always felt uh, conflicted with Guy Fox. I don't know enough to say, like, way to go or fuck you. Like, do you know, does that make sense? Yeah, I, it's a really, it's a really weird story, I think, because um, it is religious. Yeah. Very much so. And so I support it and I don't. <laughs> and I'm just like right where I, I, I but don't, I don't know have enough, enough of the issues. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, anytime, anytime people want to restructure the government, I think that that's their, their, uh, they're right, and I don't think whether or not that's because they're all fucking so, Christian, or if they're all... Is it, you think it's their right to want to, or a right to force a reconstruction? Their right to want to. Okay. Uh, if, yeah, no, if I they, agree. If they, yeah, if I just If they want sure to force a reconstruction, they better not do it against my will, because I have the right to do what I want to do, too. Exactly, yeah. I was yeah. Just, just curious what yeah. you... Yeah. yeah. Whether it be Christian or whatever. Just say, shut your fucking mouth hole. Shut your fucking mouth hole. Guy Fox, <laughs> but yeah. So we'll see if we can get some of those. Yeah, that'd be awesome. On to talk about it, but definitely, I think none of the above campaign is something that's pretty achievable. And I think once it picked up, they'd easily. I mean, if anything, figure out else, a way to stop it. Yeah, I totally agree. But I think if anything else, it would just show the true level of uh, discontent, or what? what I don't yeah, remember, you know, I would say the, the actual unrest that people feel with the two party system that we have. Yeah, I yeah. agree, and and I don't see them getting rid of write in. No, they can't. They can't get rid of write ins, and so. But there's, you know, I think the idea of actually having an option to say none of the above would is pretty far fetched. Yeah, but I think it's the a, fighting for it would raise huge awareness. I think it's super achievable. It would be something that'd be like, uh, you know, if they get enough pressure, they would do it because they don't want that unrest. Yeah, and they would be like, it's just a fucking box. It, it would make them one more way of trying to be held more accountable to the people instead of lobbyists. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the hard, the hardest fucking thing with how our system works is that you have to assume that people are educated. And yeah. people... And they're not. No, well, it's not just that they're not. They, they hide the education from them. They hide the truth from them. And people get everything in fucking sound bites. And we were just talking about the Health Care Reform Act, Obamacare, and it how if depending people, on how they ask yeah, the polling question the polling yeah. question um if people ask what they feel about it uh what is it a quarter, yeah so a it's, third, it's two thirds you know and, and yeah so i know this is I, I hate quoting statistics when i don't know the exact statistics but yeah i know like right around if if they poll you know if people agree with the obamacare or the affordable care act about two thirds say no mm-hmm. but when they poll the individual aspects mm-hmm. of it of the affordable care act they say they agree with those individual aspects okay so it just depends on how you word the question. People, it's like people don't agree with, in general with the title, but they agree with everything inside of it. They just don't understand that those things are inside. Yeah, of there's it. a disconnect. There's a disconnect, and and I don't. But just to be honest, I don't agree with the Affordable Care Act. Mm-hmm. Like I agree with free health care. Like, yeah, straightforward. I believe, you know, if we're gonna fucking pave roads, we should fucking take care of our take people. care of our people and it's you know, not a it's not a strange idea if you, we're gonna have education which is a whole nother ballpark we should fucking just have health like i just i just i don't see how people are so disconnected where 
if you were to see someone bleeding profusely because they had a cut on their leg in the middle of the road and no one's around to help them and you're there, are you just going to walk by them? No, of course you're going to help them because that's what they need. Mm -hmm. And so how do people get that disconnect of, well, I don't want to help somebody? It's... I don't even understand it. You know, it makes like I I have we, these arguments all the time with people, and they're just like, "Well, you know," it's like, "No, I don't know." I don't. It all comes down to money. I mean, that's yeah. the reality of it. They're like, "Well, I don't want to pay for it." Well, get rid of fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems obvious to me. <laughs> it's, but it it's it, like in reality, they're like, "I don't want to pay for it." But like, if if put in a, an alternative circumstance, it'd be like, um, this person right here. I'm going to shoot them in the head unless you give me a dollar. You're going to give them a dollar. You're going to give them a dollar. <laughs> yeah. You're going to save someone's life over a dollar. <laughs> I mean, what? Like, it's just ridiculous. What's the amount? Do you think most people would not save their life? Like, nah, that's too much. Just pull the trigger. <laughs> uh, there has to be an amount. Depends on the person. No, it, it, that amount couldn't exceed their possibility of paying. Okay. Um... But what about for you? Is there is there an amount what that you wouldn't you wouldn't give up to save someone's life? Yeah, that I could actually pay. I'd yeah. say five thousand. So if they said five thousand and five, you're like, sorry, fuck, sorry. Well, dude. five thousand and five is just <laughs> obviously no. I mean, give or take another. So than that. I mean, this is a, a ridiculous. I mean, question. it would be my. I mean, it's a preposterous question. Yeah, it is a preposterous. <laughs> but you know. If I could literally save somebody by taking my savings account out, I would. It's not a question in my mind. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't even hesitate. Yeah. So. Yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't even be a dollar amount. Yeah, like, I couldn't imagine. I would be like, amount. I only have this much money. Is It'd there be anything whatever else I, I could do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whether I had five thousand yeah. or whether I had a million, whatever it would be at my disposal, I'd, I'd do it. What if questions? Yeah, I fucking hate them. I don't know why I just posed one. Yeah. What would you do if you if you were had an animal on an island and you couldn't eat anything else? But... I'll fucking eat it. <laughs> um, and yeah. animal crackers and coconuts. Your dad keep posing posing the you know well if everyone went vegan overnight what would we do with all the animals? He does that to me all the time now. It's like four times in the last couple of months. Well, number one, not everyone is going to be vegan overnight. You don't need to even try. It's not even worth answering. I don't even. I don't even acknowledge the question anymore. (laughs) I've already answered it multiple times. I'm I'm sure he does it to you too. Yeah, no, he has, and I and I answered it, and that's probably why he does it. I don't know because yeah, I just don't even answer him because he doesn't understand. Anywho, yep. So this uh this next segment we're gonna call uh the new vegans. I want to call it vegan for life. Vegan for life. Yeah. Okay. Because I just want to use that Earth Crisis drop. Very good. Dum, dum, blah. Here we go. Vegan! For life! Vegan! To the death! My name's Nima. I'm uh, 22 from uh, San Mateo, California. Okay. So how long have you been vegan? A uh, month and a half. Uh, why did you decide to go vegan? Um, a friend of mine, uh, her name's Stephanie. Um, she's been vegan for about, I met her a year ago. And um, she just just kept telling me to do it. I just kept brushing it off. But then she told me to watch this documentary called Earthlings. And I watched it and it just it just horrified me. So, I, I, so I've never been able to get through Earthlings. So um, how did you actually get through it? It took about four or five ten minute segments to do it because it's rough. It it is very it's a very good documentary. Have you seen any yeah, other really documentaries on um veganism and animal rights? I've seen uh Forks Over Knives. Mm-hmm. Uh that's about it. So what's been the biggest change for you so far? Um just like not being able to have not being able to go to like restaurants just regular restaurants and eat food you have to pick your meals and plan your meals out and make them yourselves for the most part so what what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far in being vegan uh not not really giving into temptation because i haven't really you know had any like 
major cravings for it, but just kind of dealing with other people, dealing with like my friends giving me just a hard time about it and stuff like that. You know, the the sad thing is um I've been vegan for 21 years now and that and just to let you know it never stops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what kind of stuff are they saying? Just just like jabs here and there. You you don't want you don't want a bite of my bacon cheeseburger? No. I'm all right. I'm good. Yeah. Eventually you learn to come back with like, no, nah, no, I'm okay without killing things or <laughs> or, or even, you know, meaner things like, no, I'm yeah. okay without that pus in my body. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to eat cholesterol. Yeah, I don't like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like periods. I'm not good with menstrual exactly. cycles. <laughs> um, eggs, you know. Yeah. So it's did you good. make the change um, from just being a standard American diet to vegan or did you make the change to vegetarian I did, first? I did vegetarian first. I did vegetarian for about four months mm-hmm. and then vegan for the past month and a half, almost two months now. So that's actually, for some people, that's a, a pretty quick turnaround. Um, what made you make that, that decision to go from vegetarian to vegan? Just, I mean, I just I don't think vegetarian was, you know, good enough. You're still eating animal products. But my main goal at the end was to just completely take out animal products. But if you're still drinking milk and eating eggs and stuff like that, it doesn't really sort of defeats the purpose. So what's been your favorite alternative um, to an, an, uh, an animal-based food that you found so far? Uh, Dye wedge cheese. I love the Havarti. Have yeah, you tried the, the Havarti? Yes. Oh, my the God. The Havarti oh, yeah. is it's phenomenal. It's a revelation. I, I'm I, never going back. You Just to let you know, you have to feel super lucky to be going vegan at the time you did. Because <laughs> when I went vegan, not only was there like virtually no cheese, there was virtually, you couldn't find soy milk, you couldn't find like anything, and no one even knew what the term was. So yeah. it's, it's way fucking easier now, and they have amazing yeah. alternatives. I was always, I mean, I wasn't against it when my friend Steph uh, suggested it. I was just, just, all right, whatever. I'm not, probably not going to do it. It's not, that's cool, it's your decision. But then, you know, I watched the documentary and... I, I saw what she was saying. I finally, it, it hit me. I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. I'm not going to eat that anymore. <laughs> so how persistent was Steph with you? Uh, well, she's very. <laughs> <laughs> she's just, she's, uh, she's very adamant about her beliefs. And she tells everybody that she comes across how she wants, how she's vegan and how it's better for you. It's better for everyone. It's better for the world, pretty much. And then it just finally hit me. Well, awesome. Um, do you have any yeah. um, advice for people that want to make the change? Um, you just need to tell yourself that you're going to do it. Because it takes, I think, there's, like, outside factors. Like, if you watch TV and stuff, you're going to get all these commercials about fast food and stuff. And then you just have to tell yourself that you're not going to eat it. Basically, you just have to win the battle within yourself to say that you're not going to do it. And then after that, it's really easy. That's awesome. So do you, do you have any questions for us on advice or anything like that? Like I said, um, combined, we have probably 45 years being <laughs> vegan, 40 years being nice. vegan. So. Um, variety of meals. How, how do you guys do that? Because I'm, I'm eating pretty much the same few things over and over again what is your like current meal plan like what what do you usually eat over and over again breakfast is usually cereal or like a bagel with vegan cream cheese um lunch salads or sandwiches and then dinners same thing salad sandwiches some sort of pasta um how do you uh, do you like trying new foods yes well, i'm open to it have you tried lots of different ethnic foods yes i'm i'm persian okay so. well because indian do. food is probably the best bet you're gonna have um okay i eat you know curries probably half the time different you know like either like bang and barta aluko b chana masala things uh-huh. like that um okay. uh, that's just because i absolutely love them and they're amazing um mm-hmm. but 
that's what I found. I found uh, most more ethnic foods are just definitely yeah um, the the easier bet. Um, I don't know. I I'd agree. Um, I'd say just getting different types of grains and pastas, like getting um, like couscous, for example, something that a lot of people don't really try very uh-huh. often. Yeah. Uh, and then you can get different types of rice, um, different types of pasta, and kind of just mix it up because, you know, you could have your um, very savory type of noodles or you could have more of like a sweet noodle or, you know, spaghetti noodle. Um, oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, not that you should probably not <laughs> saturate your diet with noodles. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, uh, you know, and one thing that I consistently challenge myself to do is i'll find a fruit or a vegetable that i've either been hesitant to try or i've in the past didn't like and force myself to eat it several different ways just to get the variety of it like one that i'm battling with right now are beets because they're fucking disgusting and i love beets and i know they're really good for me so i'm trying to figure out a way that i can actually put them in my diet so i can consistently keep trying yeah i've, I've had a battle with uh avocado i hate I, avocado I, I, I could eat beets. I can eat beets. Avocado, it's it's tough. It's green and slimy. It's fucking disgusting. It's slimy. It's yeah. slimy. It's tough. <laughs> so, do you like guacamole or burritos? No. Yeah, I, it might no. it might just be one that you have to just the throw only out way the that, <laughs> like with avocados. The only way I've been able to eat them is in um, vegetarian sushi. Okay. And it seems to kind of mask and hide it in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you put enough wasabi just... on it, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just got to plug my nose and just eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's, but... That's the only way. That's one I can't get over, and I've tried. Um, my wife and daughter love avocados, eat them all the time, and mm-hmm. I just, I can't do it. No, it's, it's a battle, every time. <laughs> An- another Another great thing for breakfast is tofu scramble. I don't know if you've been able to make that yet but it's it's relatively easy to make and it and it kind of um what what's the word i'm looking for for scrambled eggs yeah it, it's kind of really scrambled to get the high protein <laughs> um have you cooked much with tofu um here and there not a lot but i have yeah for people like um seems like you're a little familiar with it a lot of people don't know the different types of tofu and they'll yeah. A lot of people get like silken when you really should be eating like firm and mm-hmm. think vice yeah. versa. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, this isn't healthy for you, but I always prefer flash frying or deep frying it. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything tastes better deep fried. Yes, very true. I'm, I'm definitely not doing the vegan thing for the health reasons. So, no, that's, <laughs> that's, I get that too. It's, people ask me, did you do it to become healthier? I'm like, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I and I definitely don't think it's healthier because I'm still eating the same the same junk food. I just I'm not eating meat. You know, it it so, can be. You know, um, but it, it like, definitely can be. Yeah, if you make it that way. But I yeah, yeah, I haven't done that yet. You know, that's actually been my biggest challenge uh, is to make it healthier. <laughs> I'm, I'm still eating cookies and stuff at night right before I go to sleep with a glass of like almond milk. Totally. <laughs> You know Oreos That's, are vegan, right? They are. I do fuck, know that. Fuck yeah! I mean, hell yeah! <laughs> so, what? What's your, your the biggest surprise food that you found out was vegan? Um, I'm just shocked that a lot of foods weren't vegan. Like I, I thought they were. Like, like, what was your biggest shock that wasn't vegan? Um. What was it? It was a couple days ago. I just um, uh, uh, my garlic fries. I think like some of them they sprinkle cheese in them. Mm-hmm. That's just you, you're ruining that for me. Like I need it when I go to the Giants games. I ate my garlic fries. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just it goes hand in hand. But I can't do that anymore. And uh. certain types of uh, beer now I've realized are not vegan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that there's a Which website. Sucks. I think um, yeah. called Barnivore, something yeah. like that. The, yeah. 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 yeah, and it pretty much is updated all the time with people um, putting in their input about what their responses were from different beer and wine companies. 
There's also an, an iPhone app. My wife has an iPhone app that she uses all the time. Oh, that's cool. I should get that. So I don't know what it's called. I don't drink, so I don't have to worry huh. about it. They're, they're a better man than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have anything else you'd like to add? or? Um, I would just say that if people are hesitant or skeptical to try it, that they definitely should because it's not it's not the end of the world. You're not eating just vegetables. Like there's there's alternatives that you can eat and it makes it it makes it really easy to make the transition and I would recommend. Uh my name is Andrew. And how long have you been vegan? Uh coming up on my 4 month mark. Do you know the exact day? The exact day that I started? Yeah. I do, actually. One moment. <laughs> I, try, I keep mes- uh, memos in my phone for just such an occasion. Uh, <laughs> I started uh, July 23rd. That's awesome. I wish I knew the exact day I started. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I have an idea, but not. I know the year yeah. and roughly the season. Eh, so I don't know the year. <laughs> I was 11, so it makes it a little harder to, to remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, I under- that's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> so, why did you decide to go vegan? Uh, well, essentially, I have a best friend who one day came into work and told me that he was trying to go vegetarian. And me, as a carnivorous beast at that particular point in time, uh, kind of just questioning him about it, and you know, not being exactly the most supportive person. Uh, a couple weeks later, he comes back and says, I've decided to go vegan, and now I'm in an uproar. Cause this is weird to me. Being in my family, you know, part Italian, you know, it's just weird. Vegan, what the hell? There's no sauce, cheese, and meat in your food. That's not food. <laughs> so, you know, the more and more I talked about it with him, the more and more I discovered it. You know, it's something that I could do. And at that point in time, I was in a, a place where I really needed to make a lifestyle change because I didn't really want to die at age 50 because of heart disease, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought, yeah, screw it, let's try it. And it turned out it was a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, and i stuck with it ever since. What was that defining thing that made you make that final choice? Yeah, the defining moment was essentially I stepped on the scale and I broke 300 pounds, and that was a major wake-up call for me, and I, that's basically when I knew I had to do something, something drastic. So how, how have the results been so far? Uh, pretty pretty solid. Uh, in the first month, I lost, believe it or not, like 10 pounds in the first month, which I thought was a little strange. And uh, as till now, I lost roughly about 20. Is that uh, just diet change or you... No, that's diet change in gym four times a week. Awesome. God, I wish I had the motivation to go to the gym four <laughs> times a week. <laughs> gym, gym partners, man. I'm telling you, gym partners. Totally. Totally. That's, <laughs> you're right. I totally would work. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when one's a pretty lady. Yeah, it's, it's motivation in itself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best motivation. Amen. <laughs> so uh, have you had any challenges so far? You're saying it's been a pretty easy transition, but is there anything that's been hard? Just, just the, social, the social aspect of it. I, I, know, I don't know about you guys where you guys live, but here it's, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a social stigma to be vegan. It, it has a, an air of pretentiousness that surrounds it. And I guess for me, it's... it's well, first of all, I don't tell people I'm vegan unless I absolutely have to, just because I can't be bothered to deal with the questions. And I, if I, someone asks me how I get my protein one more time, I'm going to smack him. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating. Well, it, it's, but, really, it's really hard not to have that air of pretentiousness when you know you're so much better than everyone else. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not confirming nor denying. <laughs> <laughs> No, but just, just just the social aspect of it, like especially uh, a few of my gym buddies, they were uh, not 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 too pleased in my manhood was put in question. But you know, I uh, you know it got past that pretty quickly. You know, the the whole eating out thing was also difficult. My family mm-hmm. loves to eat out, and that had a whole new set of challenges. What's what was the the biggest challenge that you thought you would face that turned out to be actually relatively easy? Barbecue. I love barbecue, or loved previously. Um, I thought it'd be very difficult for me to completely give up meat, especially since my entire family in, like eats it. You know, I'm pre- predominantly the main cook in my family as well. I do all the grilling. So being, having to cook the food but not being able to eat it, you know, and I thought eventually you know, I wouldn't even want to cook the food, that kind of stuff. That would yeah, 
more or less that. So you you do a lot of grilling. Do you grill vegetables at all? Yes, yes, we have to. It's it's. So give me some advice. I don't ever, and I want to learn, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Oh, damn, man. All right, it's 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 honestly the easiest thing. Uh, do you happen to have a garden by chance? Yes. Do you grow zucchini? Of course. Okay, so you got these monster zucchinis, correct? Mm-hmm. All right, so just just you know, cut them into cut them into um you know your little circles. And then in, I usually make some like garlic infused olive oil. It's just olive oil with some garlic. Just chop up diced garlic, stick it in there, let it sit, mix it up, rub it on your uh, whatever vegetables you're trying to make. Throw some salt and pepper on there, grill it until it's done. You're good. And you can basically use that for more or less everything. I've done it with eggplant. I've done it with yeah a lot of stuff. Also, you can get like a a, a wok. It's got uh, holes in the bottom, mm-hmm. and you can put that on the grill. And you just cut up, you dice up your vegetables. You can do like a an olive oil, lemon, rosemary, just like a bunch of stuff in a bowl. Throw it in there, leave it on the grill till it's tender, and there you go. Sounds amazing. sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's honest, grilling is it's really it's really simple. Oh, it looks like we lost you for a second. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No, it's no. Okay. Um, so. It, we were saying, did you have any advice? You wanted to start over on that one? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, just advice, general advice. Just educate yourself. That's really probably the best thing that you can do. Educate yourself on what it is to be vegan, how you can survive in city life. Um, before you go to a restaurant, look up the menu, see what you can do. Uh, eat before you go out with friends if you're worried about that kind of stuff. Don't be afraid of negative opinions of people. Don't let them. Because a lot of people, when you tell them that you're doing this, especially when you bring up the animal cruelty mm-hmm. aspect of it, people think, you know, oh, you're a freaking tree hugger, druid, whatever, that kind of stuff. Try and I understand that people are a little bit intimidated by the fact that you've done something that they personally don't think they can do. And more, most importantly, never think you're better than them just because you're doing this. Because, you know, just because you've kind of, for lack of a better word, seen the light on the, the, just how absolutely terrible it is what they what the meat companies do doesn't mean that everybody else has to follow your same path at the same time that you've done it. So just be be courteous, be educated, and don't be afraid. Awesome. So I, I'm going to assume that you're not doing it just for the health. No, it started off that way. And my friend said something, my, the guy who got me into this said something very important to me. He says, if you're only doing it for the health benefits, you won't stick with it. And he was really right. I don't know when it happened, hmm. but one day it just it, it hit me that you no, know, I started watching documentaries on on Netflix and like all this stuff about it's it's just it's really terrible when you really think about what they do. And a lot of people think, oh well, it's just an egg or it's just a glass of milk. But the conditions that the animals have to live in, it's like I wouldn't w- wish that on my worst enemy. That's awful, and it just ah, oh, just kind of pisses me off a little bit. <laughs> and then I just started thinking, I started watching more and more things, and I realized that by going vegan, if everybody in the world went vegan, you could practically solve 90% of the world's problems. And a lot of people don't get that. Definitely. Yeah, totally. What are some of the documentaries that you've uh, watched? Oh, um, oh, shoot. Food Incorporated was a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man. There's just a ton on on Canadian Netflix, and I know American Netflix is vastly superior to my own. So <laughs> everything that I have, you guys definitely have. Uh, educated, educated was probably one of the greatest ones because it I, showed it just showed like a bunch of people who could so easily do it. Yeah, I I, I think that's one that doesn't get as much yeah, recognition as it should. I I really love it because it really just shows yeah. how easy it is to make the transition. Yeah, and I, I liked how it, it also showed people from different walks of life. It showed a family man, you know, it showed a, a, a young woman who was dealing with the, the, uh, the social pressures of her family. Like, it showed everything that a vegan could possibly have to go through, and it showed them how they could, how they could solve it, how they could fix it. Yeah, I really, I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, it's one I, I hand out all the time to people. Yeah, one, definitely a good one. One of my favorite parts from that is, like, when the, the girl's sitting with her friend in the restaurant, and they talk about fish. And she just like comes up with an answer of why she shouldn't eat fish, and I was like, she it just clicked. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. So uh, sitting right here, we have about forty years of uh, vegan experience. Do you have any any questions for us or any advice that you you, you need to get? Uh, to be honest, not really. I mean, um, so I guess one of the things I'm struggling with currently is 
how companies use other words for things that aren't vegan. Like I just realized a couple of weeks ago that gelatin was made from was made from animals. I didn't uh-huh. know yeah. that. Or there's some forms of taurine that are usually found in energy drinks that aren't actually vegan. I think they use most 90% of them use synthetic taurine, but yeah. originally it was it was an animal product. That kind of stuff. Like it, it, it's hard to to know exactly what is and isn't vegan. You know the the biggest ones that I uh, always found were, were shockers to me is. Um, L-cysteine, I think some people call it L-cysteine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a dough conditioner. It's in a lot of breads. And it could oh. be duck feathers or It could be made hair. with duck feathers or human hair, depending on the country of origin. <laughs> uh, human hair? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or duck feathers. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's another yeah. another one that's uh, a tricky one? Um, Carmine. Carmine's Carmine. one that's not very... That's, that's a put, red that's food coloring. Out made oh. from beetles it's in um lots of oh. grapefruit juices and things like that oh, okay yeah, i'm not a huge fan of juice in the first place so i don't have to worry about that yeah yeah, well, yeah. In, in terms of like like what kind of bread do you guys eat you know and we're like su- store bought bread. yeah we're super lucky in our area um we have a bread here that's just like the most popular bread locally and it happens to be vegan and there's okay. yeah because like I, I don't know about, i got a couple breads that I can get here and reading the ingredients, you know, it says veg- vegetable diglycerides, whatever the hell that kind of stuff is. But it says specifically says vegetable beside it. And I'm assuming that's OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, for the most. OK, so um, I, I guess I guess another important one is how do you guys feel if it says may contain milk or eggs? If it says may contain. Personally, like do, do you guys do you guys still eat that product? Here or? you go, Jordan. Yeah, personally, I like if it, you know, made in a factory that also processes nuts and milk and all that other stuff it's not intentionally going into the food mm-hmm. and so like might be. yeah some might be and that's and that's like it's just an ethical issue that i think a lot of people have to bring up with themselves the way that i kind of view it is that it's not intentionally being put in the food and i know that sounds kind of weird but it's like um so the food is actually vegan so if it cross contaminates at all the the original food was vegan. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. To you? So since I'm yeah. not vegan because of allergies or anything like that, yeah. I view it the same as going to a restaurant that might also serve, you know, things that aren't vegan, and, and it's just using the everything's same in the same kitchen. Mm-hmm. So you, it's they they're just making you aware of the cross contamination. So I'm personally okay with it, but I think it's a personal choice, and I'm not gonna, you know, get on anyone's case. For on either side. I guess, it's some, I guess it's kind of like a necessary evil. Sometimes. Yeah, un- unfortunately. You know, there's some great all vegan companies out there. Um, you know, Day is one of them. It's a Canadian company. Mm-hmm. You know, and you don't have to worry about that uh, type of yeah. thing. But, <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot that aren't. <laughs> you know, so you, you get that, that just that. Or there's a lot of vegan companies that use um, shared equipment. They use uh, shared processing facilities mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. because of costs. So, yeah, so, yeah I, I think it's kind of just a, a necessary evil a little bit, you know. And I think if you were to take that and scrutinize it under a microscope, let's say 99% of the time, it's not going to have that cross-contaminant. I think they just have yeah. to put it on there for allergen purposes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I don't know. That's my two cents on that. I'm Aaron. And how old are you, Aaron? I'm 19. 19. So, how long have you been vegan? Um... I've- been vegan for probably three weeks now. Um, I was vegetarian when I was younger, though. Uh, um, and then I stopped for a while. What was the time frame uh, that you were vegetarian? Um, I went vegetarian when I was in grade six, so I was 11. And then I stopped... I think just before I turned 15. So I was, it was about three and a half years. What made you uh, stop? Um, dating a douchebag boyfriend. <laughs> okay. He was, he, he was really pushy. So, and it, yeah, it, yeah, it didn't work out. <laughs> needless to say. So, um, yeah, I'm back now though. <laughs> so, so what made you make the decision to go, not just going vegetarian, but to, to go all the way vegan. Well, I don't really, I don't really support the way that the animals are treated, regardless. So why not just go all the way? 
So it, it, it didn't really make sense just to stop at not eating meat. I don't really eat a whole lot of meat anyway, so I was like, you know what? I might as well just fully cut it out of my diet. And then after all, I'm like, you know what? I'm This whole trying not to eat dairy thing is just kind of a little too half-assed for me. So I might as well just not eat dairy. And then eggs, I just, I, I can't handle too much protein. I actually, my body needs to have more fat. So um, I can't really eat eggs anyways. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it just kind of worked out, I guess. And then honey is not really that hard to remove from your diet. That's, that's, it's interesting you said honey. We haven't asked anybody else about that. Um, Yeah, that's true. But that's, that's one that a lot of vegans actually, they'll, they'll say that they're vegan and then still eat the honey. And um, so I'm glad that you recognize that even. Thank you. Um, I still, I, I do like, I, um, I have an old bit of honey left over from before, and basically once that's gone, I'm not eating honey anymore. It's just, it might take a while, and I don't want to waste it. I don't want to just throw it out. I can't, like, I guess I could give it to someone. That would probably be the other option. But, you, know. you know, that's that's usually the best advice I like to give to people if um, if they're wanting to, and they're just like, well, I don't know how long it's going to last, or, you know, either a family member or a neighbor, they're going to buy it anyways. Mm-hmm you know so sometimes it, it it's a kickstart to to make that that transition fair enough so what what's been the biggest challenge so far with um with this for you um having enough veggies in the fridge i eat a lot more vegetables now which is good so so how do you, how do you how do you uh, i can't even talk how have you overcome that challenge of getting more more veggies just in the fridge um, it sounds kind of silly. Um, well, I don't know. I guess going to the grocery store more. <laughs> um, there's not really much of like a challenge toward anywhere else in my life. Like it, a lot of people have issues with, you know, the members of their family or their friends or anything like that. Well, the first thing is, is I don't really have any friends. <laughs> and then the second thing is that... Um, my grandfather was actually vegetarian um, in his life, and he wouldn't eat eggs either. Um, but he, yeah, he was vegetarian for religious and health reasons, and so my family's already kind of used to it um, with that one. Um, but so I don't, I don't know, I don't really have the problems that most people have, which is I can relate to them sometimes. I guess I was in foster care for a while, and that sucked with being vegetarian when I was younger, so mm. I'm kind of rambling now. Oh, no, totally. <laughs> so um, you said your grandfather w- was vegetarian for religious reasons? Can, can I ask what, what religion? And Yeah, um, he was um, in, it was, it's, I think it's kind of, I think it's, I don't know if it's a religion or a philosophy. I think it's a religion because you have to practice it. He got up every morning to meditate at five, um, but it's called satsang. I don't know how it's spelled, but I'm sure a quick Google search would um, work for that. But it's, um, he um, had to go to India, I think, every year or two to to go practice in this. I don't know. I don't really know exactly what it was, but okay. there's some of his books that I have yet to read. He wrote a book? Is that right? Or? No. <laughs> no, um... Just books that he had from before, just okay. that he read. I wonder yeah. if it's if it's uh, similar to Jainism, which is also another Indian religion. Um, sounds very familiar, sim- similar to Jainism. Hmm, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any advice for people who are prospecting to become vegan? Um, a lot of the time, people have. Um, they're a bit weary of veganism because they think that they aren't going to be getting enough nutrition. Um, and a lot of people, um, that I talk to are like, oh, where do you get your protein from? I think that's kind of a big, um, well, a big, a big thing with, I guess, carnus is protein and iron and stuff. Well, the thing is, is that you can get it easily and it's not actually, um, 
as like it's necessary to your diet but it's not as big of a staple as people seem to think it is um and when you focus on all the vegetables and whatnot you actually get more micronutrients which are um much more beneficial to you so i think that a lot of people um should just jump in and do it why not i mean you're you're saving a lot of um pain you're saving a lot of um water um you're helping the environment you're doing like all sorts of really awesome things so you know even if i think i think the biggest thing is just to listen to your body and listen to what you need and um just try to figure out um what foods i don't know you might like that are the kind of staple um, nutrients in your diet i guess i don't know okay so what was the the pinnacle moment that made you decide to make that change again to to go vegan um well i actually i started a blog on tumblr in july and with that i've been i've been kind of blogging about social justice and environment issues and whatever and i started um talking to a lot of people that are vegans on there and um it kind of just turned into me being like well it doesn't doesn't it doesn't really make sense for me to be um an activist and not be vegan so i just did it awesome Yeah, so um, between Jeremy and I, we have about maybe 40 years of vegan experience. Is there any questions that you have for us? Um, 40 years? How old are you guys? <laughs> well, I went, I went vegan at 11, and, and I went vegan okay. around that same time. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay. so we're, not, we're not terribly old, but <laughs> I'm in my mid-20s. I'm in my thirties. <laughs> okay, okay, I got you. Um, well, what was it like when you went vegan um, in that era of time? <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Make- okay, um, no, no one knew what the term was, and so that was very hard to just explaining what what it actually meant. But there was virtually the alternatives that existed weren't really available in my area. I lived in rural Utah in a, in a farming community, and so. I didn't have, I had to drive, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to get things like soy milk, to get any alternative. The only, um, I know they may still make this and I'll shit on it. I don't care. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Yeah. It was the worst fucking thing that ever existed. And it was the only alternative to mayonnaise on the market. Um, yeah, it was just, I think the hardest thing was just trying to explain to people what it actually was. And nowadays people actually for the most part know the term and know what it means and now we can actually go to my local grocery store and buy soy milk and buy tofurkey and buy you know your baseball trainers which were never available before i remember having to go on to down the aisles and finding the boxed soy milk that they don't keep it cold or anything it's just yeah it's there that was i remember when silk hit the market it was like great (laughs) (laughs) those were like life-changing moments for us um yeah (laughs) um do you make any of um any of your own almond milk or soy milk or anything now you know i used to make all my own tofu um uh i don't make it too too much anymore just due to time constraints it's actually really easy to make so i used to make the soy milk but i don't personally like um those alternatives to milk very much so i don't really consume Mm. them at all um only except for baking and things like that but um i do make a lot of my own stuff. I make uh, bread, bagels, uh, sourdough bread. Um, like I said, I can make tofu. I can make. I, I do a lot of that. Yeah. And I've I've made rice milk before. Um, it's just easier to buy it. I know. Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. <laughs> yeah. It's it sucks, especially um, being on a budget, having to buy things like that. If you if well if you do drink a a lot of um, I guess non-milk now <laughs> mm-hmm. but um yeah it's it sucks because it gets it gets to be so expensive and then there's all the additives in it there's like carrageenan or however you pronounce it and Thicken that's it kind of the bit. point is there's a bunch of stuff in it that you don't even know how to pronounce and that's kind of why it's so much better to just make it your own make your own because you save so much money with it too yeah um, totally i, I mean think... have you have you made like soy milk yourself 
No, not yet. I've been wanting to make almond milk. Yeah, it's 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 really not too intensive to make them yourself. Um, mm-hmm. But the the good thing, if you're being vegan on a budget, the good thing to remember is that the thing that makes veganism expensive is the alternatives. If you're mm-hmm. just going with, you know, uh, potatoes, rice, vegetables, beans, and your produce, it's always cheaper um, mm-hmm. to to go that route. Absolutely. Um, the, there's one actually one recipe that I found, um, and it also in, like for almond milk, and it also includes um, what to do with the leftover almond meal, I guess. And mm-hmm. I and um, you can make hummus with it. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Hmm. I know it sounds delicious. Yeah, that's one of the great things about making soy milk. Also, um, every pr- byproduct of the soy milk process is is utilized. So. You get your fiber, which is called um, akara, mm-hmm. and you can use like make veggie patties out of that and other things like that. And then you have your the soy whey that gets produced from it also, which is actually pretty good to drink, but it's also a good natural disinfectant and wood cleaner. So you can use it to clean mm-hmm. um like your own entire house. Like it's it's a pretty amazing. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, that's where they cool traditionally clean the. That is how they actually clean their stuff. Um, what is that company? Major it starts with an N. Major tofu company. Nao Na- Na- something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's actually what they use to clean their entire factory. Yeah, yeah. Huh, that's really cool. I've never heard of that company though. I think we have different stuff in Canada. But... Oh, probably. Yeah, but um, it's it's it, the it's it's amazing that none of that stuff has to go wasted, and it's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's really so, amazing. Yeah, it just um, that's the other thing about soy milk that um. I find frustrating personally just because, um, well, as I've explained to you, I'm an environmental activist, so I try not to support anything that's um, genetically engineered as well. Mm -hmm. And unless it's like certified organic, you're not actually entirely sure if soy is um, genetically engineered or not. I'm not trying to bring that into. No, no, it's actually soy is one of the the most genetically modified. Ninety percent of the crops are GMO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And corn's the other one. That's a big one. And it's all because of cattle feed, not just cattle, but but yep. animal agriculture. Yeah, no, it's it's fucked up. Yep. It's terrible stuff. I think in the long run, if if we can abolish animal exploitation, then GMOs are another thing that would be a thing of the past. I mean, they'd still exist, but definitely to a lesser extent. Mm-hmm. But, but you know what? You know what contributes less to not eating um gen- or. You know, I don't know what I'm trying to ask. Um, do you know what's better than not buying genetically? Or hold on, I don't know. It, it it was an idea that kind of worked. Not eating meat is probably better than buying GMO stuff because you're still probably eating GMO stuff in the meat. There you go. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. <laughs> Factory farming is one of the biggest um, causes of environmental destruction as far as like Mm -hmm. uh greenhouse gases and destruction to the environment for feed and all sorts of other things yeah Yeah, and for uh, cattle 2010 the un did a study and said animal culture is the largest pollutant in the world definitely yeah it's 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 absolutely insane well do you have any other questions for us I can't think of anything. Do you guys have any like blogs or anything I could follow? Personal blogs or anything like that? I, I did have a food blog that? for a while. I, I haven't updated it in years. It's militantvegancooking.blogspot.com, I think. or I think it was Blogspot. I don't even remember that. You know, a really good one that I would, I would suggest following is Progressive Kitsch. Um, they're, they're really big. They have their own podcast also, and uh, the girls are fantastic. So check check them out. Um, they have their blogs and everything too. So thank you. I'm actually going to be starting up um, a vegan and kind of like DIY blog. It's like it's going to have a ton of vegan recipes. It's going to have like a bunch of like DIY tutorials on how to like I don't know make your life more environmentally friendly and easier and cheaper. And yeah, um, I don't know what it's going to be called yet though, so I can't really. Well, as soon as you have a URL for that or a name for that just let us know and we'll uh we'll shout it out for you for sure yeah totally excellent thank you hey no thank problem. you it was nice to meet you guys you too yeah yellow okay let's hurry before it fucks up again all right because cool. fuck skype yep okay this week we heard the visioneers it's simple we have roixop 
with the drug. And as always, El Comandante. Which side are you on? So, we heard uh, a couple new stories from from New Vegans, and we'd like to make this a, a more regular feature. But to do that, we need members. And the way we get members is by having you go on to our website and paying us money. But since we're just introducing it, we are going to have a special for the month of October. Yeah. So our yearly membership is usually $50. We're going to do that half off. So you can get a year membership for $25 or you can get three months for $5. For $5. Plus Plus one month for $5. Yep. So on top of becoming a member, you get the satisfaction of knowing you're supporting an awesome vegan anarchist podcast and spreading the word and you'll get free shit when we can like stickers and you'll get ebook ebooks uh extra you, bonus content extra bonus content all of our bloopers um and then some uh, first offs of the new podcast that we're creating you'll get your your input you'll listen to them first and help us create some of them yeah. So come remember at whichidepodcast.com. Should do it. That should do it. Cool. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Peace, guys. Sweet. Bye. Oh, fuck shit damn. Fuck shit damn. Yeah, fuck shit damn. <laughs> <laughs>